please welcome Core 77 partner and chair of SBA's MFA Products of Design, Alan Chachina. How are you? I don't know how many of you have seen this ad on Twitter. I see it all the time on Instagram. Uh, this is a guy named Neil Gordon who wrote this article about how people begin their talks. Um, if you click it, you get to Facebook. It says nearly every public speaker makes the same mistake in the first 15 seconds of their talk. Um, and if you shank that opening, people will tune you out and spend the whole time futzing with their phones. So while we're on the topic, put your phones away. You can social media and everything, but you came here to be here today with each other. So we're really, really happy to have you. Um, if you click into his actual deck, um, here we go, how to land the first 15 seconds of your speech without making a crucial mistake. Uh, your audience will develop an impression of you within the first 15 seconds. Honestly, I actually don't know how this is going so far. Um, <laughs> and one of the mistakes that stands out uh, the most is what they do in those first 15 seconds of speaking. So I've been through like five screens, tell me the mistake, right? So here it is. They say things like, oh, it's nice to be here, or um, how are you guys doing? And so his argument is that basically, um, when you're in a movie or at a concert or something, and it's about to start and the lights are down like they are now, like everything's possible. There's this huge potential, right? This tension in the room, right? And that if you go and say all these pleasantries, you, you've, you've sort of blown it, you've dissipated this tension and it's like a bad way to start a talk. And like honestly, like I know what the tension in this room is. The tension is, what the hell is the third wave, right? So let's get to that. So, Wikipedia third waves um, give us close to 40,000 returns. Um, if we go to Google, tons of third waves. Um, first page is a lot of this, uh, Steve Case's book, The Third Wave, which I have not read, which I'm actually a little bit embarrassed about right now, or at least the second. Um, there's three waves of the internet. The third one has perseverance. So maybe someone's gonna talk on that today. Uh, third wave of behavior therapies. Uh, movement away from cognitivism toward new forms of behaviorism, including functional analysis and traditionally non-clinical treatments, uh, techniques such as acceptance, mindfulness, cognitive diffusion, dialectics, values, spirituality, and relationship development. This sounds very, very good. Um, there's third wave feminism, of course. Um, this is the image that I picked to um, share with you today, which I think is fantastic. Um, there's the third wave of democracy. Uh, here's a map of it. Uh, there's actually a book of it. Um, here is a chart of it. And apparently, the third wave of democratization started in 1974, um, and it might be ending this week. It might be ending, like, right now. Um, so I actually should have Photoshopped into this slide, but I don't want to start out on a downer. Uh, anyway, so when you get to Hollywood, things go, like, you know, apeshit. So I love these movie posters. The third wave, the cure is just the beginning. Uh, the third wave, a volunteer, well, actually I shouldn't use that voice for this one. The third wave, a volunteer story. I'm not gonna go. Uh, this one, the third wave, the conspiracy, action-packed, high-speed, thriller. Okay, so fire the graphic designer. That is not three bullet points, that is a sentence. Um, I don't know what the hell is going on here, but I apparently have to be worried about what's in my coffee. Okay. So my all-time favorite, John O'Brien, I don't really know how to pronounce this word, I'm gonna say the third wave, Eidolon, right? And I'm like, all right, what if this were Core 77? The third wave, design. Got some Photoshop jobs. And while we're at it, uh, the third wave, I don't know if you can see this, a bomb that will change history. How far would you go to stop it? Here, a chair that will change history. How far would you go to sit in it? All right, probably not a design conference you wanted to, to go to. All right, so what is the third wave of design? Uh, the third wave of design isn't about the designer uh, or about the definition of a designer, although um, I do like this, where if you're a designer, you attach, like, you know, honorifics for PhD and doctors, you attach PD, PSD to the end of your name. So let's, let's look at it in context here. Um, uh, greetings. I will not make your logo bigger, but I am tempted to make your invoice bigger, right? Uh, sincerely. Uh, Monica Desprey.psd, right? Uh, or, um, and yes, I agree that summer internships should always be paid internships, uh, and please stop hiring our master's degree uh, graduates as interns. This is uh, from uh, uh, Alan uh, Selfinterested.psd. Um, so I like that, I think it's a good idea. Uh, but it's not about defining what a designer does either. 
Uh, so, although, um, I, do, uh, I do love this. I'll give you a second to look at this. You've got the designer doing the work there. Project manager. Um, how many of these other people are in the audience today? Probably shouldn't be doing that, right? Okay, there you go. Oh, lots, uh, but, you're, but your hands didn't go up, so. Uh, all right, it's not about how a designer feels either, although I do love this. The so work begins, you fuck off for a big amount of time, um, you panic, <laughs> and then all the work while crying, and then the death. Okay, so how many people are doing this? Yes, okay, both hands up, there we go. Uh, and this is probably a little bit of what you were thinking about where the third wave might be. It might be like a fifth bubble. It might be an intersection in this Venn diagram. Uh, so this is the landscape of innovation approaches from Nesta. Uh, I would say that today argues that the ingredients, the containers, and the purview of design have changed. And we're gonna see that, I think, over and over today through some of the people, amazing people, some of the topics, human survival and restorative design, synthetic and immersive reality, Futuring and contextual design, capital gain and value extraction. You can boo for this one, value extraction. Ooh, okay, well, oh, so how many of you are doing value extraction? Now I'm worried. Uh, disability and as a design material, data and computation as design materials, teamwork and playwork, urban farming, customized skincare, and digital licensing of indigenous artists. So I don't know what panel you came for today. I came for that panel. Like, I wanna see those, those uh, topics reconciled. Uh, systems, objects, and senses. The addition of friction, probably my favorite topic of all. I think designers have to stop making things easier and add friction uh, back into the equation. I'm secretly hoping that the speaker talking about this will, you know, argue that. We will see. Uh, climate resilience, of course, and sustainable development goals triple, of course. Um, and many, many other things that you're gonna see. So that's my time, but I guess I wanna say, like it really is nice to be here. Um, and you really do seem like a great audience. I guess I can say this now as my last 15 seconds. Uh, and I really am going to thank my Core 77 partners, Eric Ludlam and Stu Constantine. And I want to thank Laura and Deb, uh, along with all of our staff and contributors uh, far and wide uh, for 25 years of design goodness, because Core 77 turns 25 next year, which is pretty unbelievable. Yeah. So. Uh, and now, I want to please welcome uh, Alison Fonda, the amazing producer and curator of today's conference, uh, for her 15 seconds. Welcome, Alison. Thank you.